A combo box looks just like a text box, except it has a little arrow in it that when you click on it, it drops it down. And if I did a combo box for the part number, it would list all the part numbers, but the problem I'd run into is if I have a client that calls up and wants to purchase the book title, How to Mow Your Lawn, unless I have the part numbers memorized with their associated book titles, I'm toast. So what I can do is go ahead and edit the combo box so that when I click on it, it displays not only the part number, but its corresponding book title. Now before I go ahead and replace this part number text box with a combo box, there's a couple of things I need to be aware of. First of all, what is this form based upon? Is it a query or a table? Because if it's based upon a query when it comes to creating a combo box, I may get duplicates. And I don't want to base my combo box upon a query that might give me duplicates. So to find out, let's go ahead and pull up the property sheet for the entire form. And to do that, we need to right click in a blank area, go to the design view, and double click off in the gray area here to bring up the form's property sheet. And then on the All tab, up at the top, the record source is pulling the records from the QSelect query, Sale Profits, which is over here. Double click on that, and in there, we got the part number field. Does it have duplicates? Well, let's take a gander. There's 10452H2, and there it is again, 10452H2. I don't want duplicates in my part number field from these different orders. So let's go ahead and right click and see what's going on in the design view and close out of the property sheet. There's the part number field down below and it's coming from the book sales table. And you can see it's right there and you can see it's got a join or relationship to the primary key. Now remember, a foreign key can have duplicates. And I hope for my book sales for the books, that part number, I have a gazillion duplicates because we're selling. Yay! But I don't want to see that in my form for each order. I only want to see the part number listed once. And so I want to base the combo box upon the primary key field here in the book project table. And I can do that as long as the table is part of the query. I'm not going to be basing upon what's in the query here because that primary key field isn't down below. You can go ahead and add it, but actually link it, the combo box, to that primary key field, which is, well, outside of this in the book project table. And as long as the table is part of the query, and it is, and is related, and it is, I should be fine. That way I can avoid basing the combo box upon the part number field here where it's going to have duplicates. And so again, I need to see what tables this query is based upon. So let's go ahead and close out of here. Come back here to the design view, and let's click and drag a line through that and delete that part number field. And then to add a combo box, come up here, click on the design tab, go to the controls group, click on the more button, and it's right there. Go ahead and click on it and bring it down below. You get a plus sign. That means when you click, you're going to be adding the combo box. I'm going to click about eh, right there. Because when I click, it's going to add the label over to the left-hand side and then the, well, I was going to say text box, but the combo box over to the right. And it's got a wizard, and it's going to ask us a bunch of questions based upon our answers. We should get what we want if we answer it correctly here. And it says, wizard creates a combo box which displays a list of values you can choose from. How do you want your combo box to get its values? I want the combo box to get the values from another table or query, as opposed to typing in the values that you want or find a record on my form based on the value I select in my combo box. Keep it simple, the first selection, based upon another table. Click Next. And then you've got a list of your tables, your queries, or if you want to see both of them. I just want it from a table, and it's going to be the book project table. Go ahead and select it, click Next, or you can double click on it, and then it automatically advances to the next step. And then what fields do we want? Well, we want the primary key, field, part number, and the book title. So we got the part number, and we can look that up, so we can be able to look it up by book title and get its corresponding part number. Click Next, and then do you want to sort your records? Well, I do. Let's sort it by book title. So when I click on the drop-down arrow, I can quickly have it ascending A to Z's and go, okay, here's H for how to mow your lawn and not have it garbled. I mean, you can do it descending by clicking the button, but I want it ascending, and then click Next. And how would you like your columns in your combo box? Well, there's the book title. It says to hide the key column, recommends it. Well, not for me, brother. Let's go ahead and uncheck that because I want to have the part number there and then look over here, the book title, and you can see it sorting ascending numerically first and then alphabetically A's down to the Z's. 
And so I want to do a best fit for these columns by hovering over the right hand side of the column header part number until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Double click really fast, does a best fit. Let's do it to the right of the book title, double click. There we go, nice. Let's click next. And then it says when you select a row in the combo box, you can store a value from that row in your database or you can use the value later to perform an action. Choose a field that uniquely identifies the row. Well, that's easy. It's the part number. It's a primary key. And you can continue reading which column in your combo box contains the value you want to store or use in your database. Well, this is the primary key field that's unique and also the value that I want to store. So we'll leave it as is and click Next. And it says Microsoft Access can store the selected value from your combo box in your database or remember the value so you can use it later to perform a task. When you select a value in your combo box, in this case a part number, what do you want Access to do? Well, I want to store that part number value in the primary key field, the part number here. Remember, I got them labeled differently. The part with the pound symbol is the primary key and the part with the word number is the foreign key. So when I select it in the primary key field, I'm going to store it over in the foreign key, which allows duplicates. Let's go ahead and click Next. And then what label do you want to give for your combo box? Let's just do CMB for combo and then part number. Hit Enter on the keyboard and we're finished. You want to go ahead and take a look. Right click on the tab, go to the form view and OK, well, CMB part number, I can change the label for that. But in any case, Here's the part number for that order. Let's go next. There's the part number for that order. And so if I get a new order, click on New Record, click on the drop down arrow. Okay, well, this is a little bit difficult. It's kind of squishy in here, the part numbers and then the titles. But in any case, you won't get duplicate here, part numbers 10143 and then 10143 with it based upon the primary key field. Well, we just get one book title here with its corresponding part number and whatever I select there. And I go ahead and enter in the customer ID, the date of sale, and so on. Let me go ahead and hit the escape key. And let's go back to the first record, click on the drop down arrow. And let's clean this up because that's squishy for me. So let's go ahead and right click on the tab and go to the design view. But before we do that and start cleaning it up, let me go ahead and show you what else you can do once it's here. Let me click and drag this over just a bit and then click on the little gray box for the label and drag that over and then in fact double click in there and just call it the part number. Hit enter, clean that up and then hover over the right middle resizing handle till I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Double click to do a best fit and then click and well drag that back in. Okay. Now you can have it as a combo box but you can also right click on it and change it to back to a text box the way we had it, or a list box. How about if we do a list box? What does that look like? Let's go ahead and right click and go to the form view. Okay, that's squishy. You got the part number and you have to scroll over to see the book title. Let's right click and go back to the design view and hover over the bottom right hand corner resizing handle. Click and drag that out and right click and go back to the form view. And there you go. So you can have it as a list view. And what it has highlighted is the selection for that record. And so you can see that little triangle there. If I go ahead and select something else, it says, oh, you're changing it, you're writing it to be something else. You want that? Hit the escape key and it goes back to what it was before. So you can do that and we can toggle through the other records. Let's right click, go back to the design view, or you can right click on that and change it to a text box and then right click and go back to the form view and we're back to where we started. Now once you start making changes, let's right click and go back to the design view. You can't really change it back, at least I haven't had success, to a combo box. And let's right click and go to the form view and click on the drop to uh, see. So once you start messing with it and you want to go back to the combo box, we got to go back and start from scratch. Hit the delete key and let me go through this really quickly. Click on the drop down arrow, combo box, click and next. We want book project and we want part number.
And let's go ahead and right click, go to our form view, click on the drop down arrow, and let's fix this up. Okay, let's do that now. Let's right click and go to the design view because it's too squishy in there for me for this text box field. When you select it and you got your property sheet open, or if you don't, then just go ahead and double click on the border of it, it brings up the property sheet. And let's go to the Alt tab and down to the column widths. So the first column width in front of that delimiter, the semicolon, is the left-hand side, and that's for our part numbers. And so, ooh, that's a devil number, 0.666. Let's get rid of that. Let's do 0.7. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. And let's go ahead and stretch this out, make it a little bit bigger. Let's try 3, hit the Tab key, and then right-click, go to the Form view, click on the drop-down arrow. Okay, we get a little bit more space, but we got scrolly here. Now well, let's go ahead and hit the escape key, right click, go back to the design view. And I can try to make that second column width really large, but I think the problem that we're running into is the width of the list. So how about if we just did something like 4, hit the tab key, and right click, go to the form view, and click on the drop down arrow. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the part number is still a little squishy. I can make that column a little bit bigger. I don't get the scrolly bar down below. Oh, that's fancy. I can go ahead and scroll through, and it's sort of alphabetically, so I can quickly find it by book title, or I could have sorted it by part number, but it's easier for me to go ahead and look it up by book title here. In any case, let's hit the escape key and leave it there, and I'm satisfied. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.